Hey, I know winning isn't everything, but it sure does feel good, doesn't it? Especially when it's something that you want and you want it badly. So I am going to tell you about my five tips on winning a multiple offer situation here in Charleston. So number five, let me tell you, decide whether or not the property is worth you fighting for. If it's multiple offers, that means it's two or more, and that means you're competing against someone else that wants the property as well. So if you're not that person that wants to compete or fight for a property that you love or that feel of accomplishment comes across you because you've actually won on the offer of a property that you're interested in, then hey, multiple offers may not be for you. It's definitely a challenge when you are dealing with multiple offers on a property that you're interested in. So you gotta make sure that you are up for the fight because sometimes there is a battle. So I would say to make sure you are mentally and physically ready to compete with the other offers in a multiple offer situation. Number four, I would say make sure that you and your buyer's agent communicate with the seller's agent. Now I'm not going to say not so much you because hopefully you have hired me to help you facilitate the purchase of the home. So I would say that I am going to make sure I communicate communicate with the seller's agent to find out what is most important to the seller so that when we're making our offer in a multiple office situation, we touch on those key points that is focused on the seller achieving their goal as well. So make sure you communicate with the agent. Find out what is most important to the seller when selling their home so that you can see if that aligns with what you're willing to do in the offer. Number three, no low ball offers. In a multiple offer situation, there's no room for low ball offers. There is no room for you to wanna just get the best deal and come in low. Multiple offers, it means multiple people are bidding. So you wanna come in with a strong offer. Offering something way lower than what the seller is asking for isn't gonna get you that win in a multiple offer situation. So make sure you don't low ball during those times. Number two, try to have little to no contingencies. In a multiple offer situation, you want to make your offer as clean as possible. So try not to have lengthy days of contingencies. Like for example, definitely have a home inspection done. You want to do that for sure. But if you can, get it down to five days and not 10 or maybe six or seven days, but don't do 10 days. Because think about it, that owner is actually going to be taking their house off the market during this time. And if it's for 10 days, that's 10 days of no activity on the property, no marketing on the property because it's allowing you time to make all of the inspections that you want. So I would shorten it down to maybe five days, six days if possible. These days it's very busy, so you may not be able to get that, but Think about the consideration of the seller when making your offer when it comes to the contingencies. If you're up against two, three, four offers, you want to make sure that your contingencies is short or limited as you can. So before I get to number one, please, if you have any suggestions on some of the other things you think would help when a multiple offer situation, send me a message, comment. I'd love to hear what you have experienced in a multiple offer situation. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so that when I put out a video like this every month, you are notified so you don't miss a thing. Number one, make sure you have your approval in hand. Now, I'm not just talking about a pre-qualification. I'm talking about a pre-approval. There is a difference. So you make sure that you have already reached out to your lender and have gotten a pre-approval. That looks more attractive when a seller is looking at multiple offers in a situation like this because a pre-approval shows that you have actually applied, your credit was ran, and that you have submitted documents and now you have a conditional approval from a lender going through to the underwriter. So pre 
approval is definitely better to have in hand than just a pre-qual. So I would say make sure you have a pre-approval. Well, I'm Carmela Renee and I am a licensed South Carolina real estate agent, born and raised right here in Charleston, South Carolina. And I love bringing you helpful tips and fun facts about my home state, South Carolina. So if you are thinking about buying, selling, or investing here in the Charleston and surrounding areas, reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you to help you make that decision and help you navigate to the right areas for you and your family. Well, until next time, thank you for watching.